they had watercolor they had paints they had papers they had canvases it was massive three whole floors of art supplies they had literally any art supply that i could think of i could see there I didn't know where to look, I didn't know where to go, I was in love and overwhelmed at the same time, it was absolutely amazing. Hey! Thank you for tuning into my channel. So I went to Kessart and I spent hundreds of pounds. Thankfully there was a discount, putting everything together the price did come slightly lower. If I were to add up all the like recommended retail prices then it is over £400. Over £400 over 400 pounds worth of things but i'll let you know what i ended up paying at the end i'll put timestamps just in case there are particular parts that you want to see but i did this video as kind of a vlog taking you with me into cassart and then at the end i go through everything that i bought Today I am going to do my very first blog post. Um, I've been wanting to go to Cassart since Christmas but obviously shops were closed with lockdown. My sister kindly got me some gift vouchers so I thought you know the sun is out, I finished work early, Cassart is open, I think today is the day where I'm finally going to go and do some art shopping. The love of art supplies is the only thing that could get me this far into London after a shift. It took me two trains, a tube and two buses to get there. Let me know down below in the comments if you do this too but for me my way of relaxing if I've had a hard day or a busy day is to go to an art shop or to go to a stationery store and just jam in the stationery section so I knew that it would be worth it. Finding what I wanted was actually a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. I thought I knew what I wanted, I thought my list was good enough and then when I actually got here and I looked around and I saw all these art supplies, my shopping list was genuinely just paint and paper and now I think I should have definitely been more specific. A few mid swings later I figured out how to tackle the store. I'm in love. I actually love this store. I just have no idea like where to begin. There are three floors and I just decided to take it floor by floor. So they have quite a few books by artists, which was quite nice. There were hundreds of pens, Micron, Stiadler, other types of inks as well. So if you liked acrylic inks or watercolour inks, they were there. There were hundreds of paint brushes from the cheaper range that I'm showing you here to a bit more expensive to the most expensive ones that I have seen or felt before. And I really wanted a mop brush. I've been looking up mop brushes for ages. But when I came here, I saw that it was £33 and I was like, nah, I just can't do it. I can't, I can't spend so much on a brush right now when I've just bought um, some brushes myself. But yeah, you also know I do a lot of painting on the go. So I was looking at different types of paint brushes. Again, I saw more books and um, I don't really have many artist books, but I thought it might help with inspiration. So I was considering them and just looking to see what kind. So personally, at the moment, I tend to learn better with videos rather than with books. But I did think that if it was for inspiration or for, you know, trying out different techniques, then it might be good to get a book like this, where there's just loads of different artists featured. From there, I went to one of my favourite areas, the paint. And despite how much I love watercolour paints and how much I feel like I've already looked at them before, I was so overwhelmed with the number of colours, I just had no idea which ones I should get. Let me know down below if that is something that you want to know, like if you could only pick 10 colours or if you could only pick 6 colours, which ones you should get. And then I went to the other love of mine, which is essentially paper, watercolour books, sketchbooks, notebooks, just the whole works. They had an entire floor with full of papers, which again was kind of overwhelming because I don't have a mental tally of which paper I want for which budget. So I found it very hard to figure out which paper I should get um, for practice, which paper I should get to use all the time. But I'll show you what I ended up getting in the end and I will do comparison videos so that I will actually have a mental tally for myself and for you guys. So let's get started. I got a moleskin book and I know that some people wonder, well, why bother getting a moleskin book? Most watercolour sketchbooks come in this like horizontal slash landscape format but this one my friends comes in portrait format and this for me has been so hard to find recently like I haven't actually 
been able to buy one for a reasonable price since before the pandemic so that's a year now that i haven't been able to buy this so when i saw it when i walked in and i saw it i was like okay if i get nothing else i'm getting this it's a nice sketchbook to just carry around so this is what i got first and i'll be linking the prices as i'm going along and i should actually give some context to this so the reason that i went to Casa was because my sister kindly gave me a gift voucher you guys may not know this about me yet but as a whole i don't like spending a lot of money um whereas my sister's kind of polar opposite she believes in spending money to buy good quality things whereas i will like try and hold out and see if there's like a cheaper alternative that will work the same so i was really trying to like embody what she would want me to get then i thought okay cool I've got a sketchbook but most of my paintings have actually been on just like normal loose sheets of paper so i thought i need to get more paper that i can practice on I like to practice on two different types of paper so if i'm doing like loose florals and like watercolor pieces then i like to use cold press paper which is what i think most people like to use for watercolor this casa 50 sheets of 300 gsm cold press paper and for those of you who don't know cold press paper just has like a bit more texture to it so this is quite nice it's uh, a little bit rougher than other papers it's heavyweight it's good quality good quality enough that i can practice on but not so good that i feel bad to use it let me know if you're also like me and you sometimes feel bad about using expensive supplies because i've definitely been struggling with that um for a while but i'm trying to get over it as you'll see in this video i also like to use hot press paper and I use hot press paper to do like urban sketches or any kind of sketches where I think I'll be doing a lot of drawing first just because the paper itself is a lot smoother so I feel like that your straight lines are a bit straighter your curved lines are exactly how you want them to be so where I need more precision I use hot press paper and this is 50 sheets of the Cassart hot press paper this is slightly more expensive than the paper I would normally get but it's also slightly better than the paper I would normally get so there you go I wanted to try and experiment with handmade paper I kind of liked the look of the paper itself it's a bit more organic feeling so I decided to get this and I think this is I think this is unique to them so although it's caddy paper caddy mill paper it is Casa, it's 100% cotton, it's handmade, it's recycled. This is quite a nice little watercolour book. Then I also wanted individual sheets that are quite similar. Also 100% cotton, 100% recycled and it very well may be the same company but I thought I would try it out anyway and then also this is kind of a bigger format so I can experiment with that as well. So I got that. I decided to get la creme de la creme when it comes to watercolour paper. Can you guess what it is? Yes ladies and gentlemen, the 100% watercolour paper by Windsor & Newton. But then also la creme de la creme from what I have gathered from the internet and other YouTubers, Archer's paper. Now I want to see if I agree with this but essentially both of these are 100% watercolour paper. Both of these are crazy expensive in my opinion. Hopefully both of these are worth their price as well. But the Arches watercolour paper is half the size of the Windsor & Newton paper. Let me know if you'd like to see a comparison video between these two papers. So that's Arches versus Windsor & Newton. And then I thought, okay, I can't just go home with nothing but paper. So I decided to get paints. Staying in the spirit of getting good quality items, I decided to get professional watercolour paints and I haven't used Daniel Smith before but their reputation precedes them and guys, 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 whew, gosh, don't get me wrong, I've definitely been eyeing them for like months but today I thought, you know what, why not? I got 10 colours of Daniel Smith tubes to show you, to give you an example, this is Hansa Yellow Light and do not be fooled this is a five mil tube and this five mil tube costs just under eight pounds for this tube <laughs> but 
so far from what I gather on the internet everyone says it's worth it and I hope that I am not the exception to say that so the reason there was actually a rationale um, behind my buying and I spent ages looking things up while I was in store so I did leave it a bit late but essentially I wanted to get a warm and a cool of the primary colors so a warm and a cool yellow red and blue and then I also decided to get four extra colors that I thought may be a bit harder to mix such as the violet because it's quite vibrant the burnt sienna and the Payne's grey because I do use it a lot for my Windsor and Newton set and then colour that I should in theory use quite a lot of and that's the sap green because I mainly do florals at the moment so that's how it came up that's how like I decided to get those 10 colours and then guys the highlight the beast the thing that I saw as I was about to leave the store and then I saw it and I was like this is what I want this is what I've been looking for it's five minutes till closing time I've been here for over three hours but this is it I found it I'm going to get it and that thing is this bad boy so this is a Senelier artist watercolor paint and it comes in a beautiful, beautiful box. When you open it, it has a swatch set. It has 24 stunning colors. And I know I said, you don't need this many. And to be honest, you don't need this many, but boy, is it nice to have the choice. And then it comes with a tiny book with other pictures of things that they have. It comes with a mop brush and I was so happy to see this. This wasn't even the main reason that I, I got it. I was attracted to the whole thing. But then when I saw that it came with a mop brush, I was so happy because I'd been looking at the mop brushes in the shop for over 20 minutes. And the one that I wanted was similar size to this one and it was £35. And I just didn't have it in me to spend £35 on a brush on top of everything that I had already spent. So I was like, no, I'm not going to get it. And then this set comes with a mop brush. Five minutes before I was going to go, five minutes. A small precision brush. And it comes with this beautiful porcelain palette. And I've never had a porcelain palette. And I've been thinking about porcelain palettes for a while because I wonder, does it make a difference? And I will be able to answer that question for you in the very near future. I am genuinely so happy. So that, I spent hours there for the most part because I didn't know which ones, like I don't really know the comparisons and I hope that after I try everything I will have a better idea of what exactly is for me and what the pros and cons are of each one so stay tuned for those videos. I should say and I must say I by no means think that you need to spend loads and loads of money to buy expensive art supplies in order to get good at watercolour. I definitely think that there are techniques that you can gain from just using good quality but not necessarily professional grade or artist grade um, paints but I do think that there comes a point where you know you may want to experiment with more expensive things and kind of see how that evolves your art and how that changes things and I'm definitely getting to that point I don't think I'm there yet but I think I am getting to that point which is why I did such a mixed bag of shopping when I went out today so yeah you don't need expensive things if you did have to start I would say start with good quality paper um, and good quality doesn't necessarily mean the most expensive so start with good quality paper then upgrade your way to good quality paints and then good quality brushes probably in that order but you can definitely make beautiful art with whatever you have I'm going to list what I ended up spending versus what the official charges were so the recommended retail price was 400 pounds but thankfully i ended up paying 234 pounds when all the discounts came down saying that still sounds like a lot but all things considered i've got two sets of professional watercolor papers i've got caddy paper i've got normal cast art paper i've got two separate brands of watercolor of professional grade watercolor paints i've got the moleskin book i've been looking for all things considered guys guys 234 pounds well spent i'm i'm gonna say it don't do it every day first time i've done it in 20 something years so yeah 
let me know if you have any questions about the products that I have bought. I do really appreciate you guys watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you found it useful or at the very least interesting. Thank you so much for watching. I can't even tell you the number of times that I thought I hit record and I hadn't. So I was effectively just talking to myself. <laughs>